A few years ago, I made a video going over some Super Nintendo games that skipped over North America and NTSC regions and only left Japan to be released in PAL regions, and by that, I'm mostly referring to Europe and Australia. That video failed to cover every game, though, and there's one company in particular that, for the Super Nintendo, they only developed and published PAL region games, Infograms, who are now known as Atari SA. And interestingly, each one of these eight games are licensed and based on a comic or television show. Starting with Asterix, one of the most popular comics in the world, uh, other than the US, or at least my part of the US. I'd never heard of this before I was made aware of these games, but it's a long-running comic going all the way back to the late 50s. The game has you play out the story of the comic, more or less, taking place in 50 BC, where you're resisting a Roman occupation. You play as Asterix in an action platformer fighting Romans and various other enemies trying to rescue your friend Obelix. The game is as standard as an action platformer gets, there's nothing all that innovative or unique here, but that's not the point. The developers clearly set out to make a game that accurately represents the source material, and they did just that. Not that different than what you see with some Disney and Looney Tunes Super Nintendo games. Asterix is okay, but you're probably better off with... The sequel, Asterix and Obelix. It's the same kind of gameplay, but the colors, sprite animation, and backgrounds are all really well done. You can play as either character, and it's two-player co-op. I'm obviously not an expert on the comic, but based on other reviews of this game, it represents the comics universe much, much better than the previous game. There's locations varying from Bavaria to Greece to Egypt, you're climbing mountains, you're on a sailing ship, there's mini-games like this rugby one. Plus, unlike the first game, there's a password system here, which really helps because this game is long. If you're a fan of the comic series, you'll love this one, but to anyone else it's still a perfectly okay action platformer, albeit a very long and challenging one. This one also received ports on Game Boy and Game Boy Color, also only in PAL regions. Another hugely popular comic series that got a couple of PAL region Super Nintendo games is The Adventures of Tintin, starting with Tintin in Tibet, and just take one glance at this one in the very first level. There are few 16-bit games that look like this. You're mostly dodging obstacles, moving from the foreground to the background, and talking to people trying to follow what's going on in the story. It's pretty simple stuff, but again, it's not like the developers were striving for innovation or whatever. They likely just wanted something that accurately represented the source material, and they pulled it off brilliantly. It's made for fans of the comic first and foremost. If you've never heard of Tintin, you might be drawn in by the graphics here, but the gameplay isn't as engaging as something like the Asterix games, for example. It's just okay. But yeah, if you're a fan of the comic, then this game was made for you. The same can be said for its follow-up, Adventures of Tintin Prisoners of the Sun. This is very similar to the previous game, just with a different story to follow. The gameplay is the same sort of deal where you just dodge everything and rarely attack, so it's like the game is one long passive run. That may be fun for some people, and it lends itself well to speedruns, but neither of these games are for everyone. But again, if you're a fan of the comic, there's a good chance you'll enjoy both Super Nintendo Tintin games. Also, each game got ports on Game Boy and Game Boy Color, with Tintin and Tibet getting ports on Mega Drive and Game Gear. Next is Lucky Luke, another game based on a comic that goes back to the mid-20th century, and this might be the best game in this video. The game looks great, of course, recalling other western-themed games like Sunset Riders and Wild Guns, and it's a pretty good platformer where you've got to figure out how to use your surroundings to find hidden areas, collect a particular item, or rescue someone. So this may look like a run-to-the-right-and-shoot-stuff kind of a game, but there's a lot more to it here. There's also some gallery shooter stages thrown in for some variety, which is a nice touch. This is a really good playthrough with about 10 levels and a password system. I should also mention that Lucky Luke received games in North America for PlayStation and Game Boy Color. I can only speak for the latter in saying that that's also a pretty good game. Just about everyone has heard of the Smurfs, and they received two games for the Super Nintendo in PAL regions. The first game is just titled The Smurfs. It's a ho-hum platformer that's hit or miss. It's kinda slow, some sections are interesting, but the first level here, why are other Smurfs attacking me? Then you get to this tree level where you're getting hit with stuff coming off screen, so frustrating. And the jumping here is just, ugh. But the game looks good, and it's a perfectly okay Smurfs game. There's 15 levels in a password system, and a pretty cool final boss battle against Gargamel, so it's not a bad game. I mean, if if you have a small child that loves the Smurfs, this game would be okay, but otherwise I'd say no thanks. There's also a stripped down version released for the Game Boy in North America, but and that one's pretty blah too. There's also the Smurfs Travel the World, or Smurfs 2, and again this one is hit or miss. This game is much faster paced with 20 gigantic levels to explore and a password system, and it sounds like it uses the same sounds from the game Young Merlin for what it's worth. The problem with this one is that the controls feel too loose. If you die, it's not usually from an enemy, but from a missed jump. And also your kick move when you press A isn't really an attack, it's just there to move stuff around. And the sprite animation is also kind of limited, a little surprising considering how good all the other games on this video look. I would 
pass on this one. If you really want a Smurfs game, go with the first game. Unless you're huge fans of the comic or the series, then you'll probably like both games. Last we have Spiru, and I don't know, maybe I'm getting burnt out on these platformers, but this one's just sort of there. I know I sound like a broken record, but again, this game is made for a specific audience. It's not out to reinvent the wheel when it comes to a side-scrolling platformer. There's eight levels in a password system. You zip around levels by going through doors while avoiding whatever gets in your way. But yeah, this one's just okay. Not great, not terrible, not a lot going on here. You're better off with the Asterix and Obelix game, or Lucky Luke. Anyway, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.